Hello and welcome to Solar Mango Studio. These video capsules are designed to help decision makers quickly come to grips with solar. Today we will be covering the basics of rooftop solar PV. If you are new to rooftop solar, this will be a great place to start. First, let us understand the two main ways by which we can recover energy from sunlight. Solar energy is energy from the sun's radiation. This energy can be harnessed as solar thermal energy, collecting the heat from the sun, and as solar photovoltaic or solar PV that uses the light from the sun. The most common form of solar energy that we are familiar with is the solar water heater. A solar water heater is a form of solar thermal energy that uses the heat from the sun to heat water. It does not generate electricity. A solar water heater is a better choice if you only need to heat water as it is more cost effective than solar PV at heating water. Solar PV on the other hand uses sunlight and not heat to generate electricity. It is this technology that we use to generate electricity from our residential, commercial and industrial rooftops. Let us understand how rooftop solar PV works. Solar panels generate DC power when the sun shines. This DC power is in turn fed into an inverter that converts it into AC power. This AC power is fed into your distribution board from where it flows to your electrical loads. This is the basic layout of a solar plant. It should be noted that a solar plant will need, in most cases, some backup power source. The backup power source could be the grid, for instance, or a storage mechanism such as batteries. Why is this backup required? This is where we need to consider the peculiar way in which solar plants work. Sunshine is not constant. It varies during the day due to meteorological conditions. A passing cloud can reduce the amount of sunshine hitting your solar panels, reducing the power generated. This variation in generation may, in some situations, be severe enough to damage connected loads. In order to avoid this problem, the power from a solar plant is augmented with power from another source. This source can be grid power, diesel, or even battery power. By using this blend of solar power and another source of power, we can ensure that our loads receive steady, safe, reliable power. Now that we have understood how solar plants work, we can see how solar plants integrate with different kinds of power. The simplest kind of plant integrates only with grid power and has no other backup power source. This is known as a grid tied plant as it is always in sync with the grid. We would recommend this plant only for organizations that have a guaranteed supply of grid power. A pure grid tied solar plant will not suit you if you suffer from frequent power interruptions, as such a plant will not work when the grid does not work. Another type of solar plant is the off-grid solar plant that does not integrate with grid power. Instead, it only integrates with batteries or a diesel generator. Such a plant can be used in locations that are not connected to the grid at all. We do not recommend off-grid plants unless you are running very small loads, just a few lights and fans for instance. This brings us to the third type of solar plant known as the hybrid plant. Here the solar plant can integrate with grid power, battery and diesel power. We recommend hybrid solar plants for energy consumers who have grid power but with frequent interruptions and who need critical loads to be powered continuously. Most industrial and commercial energy consumers in India fall under this category and will require this type of solar plant. Now that we have seen the different kinds of solar plants, let us consider an interesting question. What would happen if a grid tied plant did not receive grid power? The answer is simple. In the absence of grid power, the grid tied solar plant will not generate solar power even if the sun is shining brightly. What would happen if an off-grid plant, which is not connected to the grid at all, did not receive both battery and diesel power? It will not generate electricity. 
If, however, the plant receives either battery power or diesel power, the plant can generate electricity. And finally, what would happen if a hybrid solar plant, which can integrate with grid, diesel and battery power, were to not receive power from any of these three sources? In this situation, the hybrid solar plant will not generate solar power. If, however, any of these three sources of power are present, be it grid power or battery power or diesel power, the solar plant can still generate electricity and supply the load. Quick recap. A solar plant should always be integrated with another source of power to obtain reliable power. Without another source of power, the plant is designed to not generate electricity even if the sun is shining brightly. This often comes as a surprise to many of our clients, but this is how solar plants are designed to work. Now that we are aware of this, how do we ensure that we get the right kind of solar plant that we need? Luckily, the answer isn't very complex. No matter what kind of solar plant you need, the solar panels are the same. It is the inverter that is different. The inverter is the brains of the solar plant and how the plant functions is governed by the inverter. The three types of solar plants boil down to three types of inverters. The grid tie inverter that integrates only with grid power. The off-grid inverter that integrates only with batteries or diesel power but not with the grid. And finally, the hybrid inverter that can integrate with grid power, diesel and battery power. A solar PV plant will last 25 years and the inverter can last 10 years or even longer. It is therefore important to choose an inverter keeping in mind both current and future requirements. Let us recap what we have seen today. Solar energy can be either solar thermal which uses the sun's heat or solar PV which uses sunlight. Rooftop solar plants which generate electricity use solar PV. The solar panels only generate DC power. It is the solar inverter that converts this DC power into AC and integrates the plant with other power sources. A solar plant needs another source of power to function. If that source of power is not present, the inverter will shut down the plant and not generate electricity even if the sun is shining brightly. The other source of power could be grid or diesel or even battery power. It is the inverter that governs which sources of power and how many other sources of power the solar plant integrates with. And finally, if you only need to heat water, a solar water heater is a better choice than heating water with electricity generated from your solar PV plant. I hope you found this video useful. If you would like to hear more about rooftop solar and how it can benefit your organization, Visit us at solarmango.com slash in slash studio for discussions aimed at helping decision makers decide their solar strategy.